Hey, hey, welcome to Jessica Stories. I'm Jessica Carney, and I will be your host. This is a Christian podcast to remind you that God is in the details of your daily life and that we can always find a way to see the silver lining in all of life's experiences. I am so determined to help remind you of your divine worth. Welcome, welcome to the episode today. <laughs> I'm so, so happy you're here. I'm so happy to do this. i um, recording this right in the midst of Colorado and many other places being um, on a stay-at-home mandate. We have, we have basically been staying home for the last almost two weeks and... Um, there's been a lot of ups and downs uh, over those two weeks for lots of different reasons, but today I'm feeling hopeful. The sun is beautiful and I'm grateful to be alive. And honestly, I'm grateful for all of the goodness I've seen people share and be through this hard time because it's affecting everyone. And I love to look for the silver lining to see where God is, where the goodness and where the light is. So something that's added light to my life is I live super close to this, what we call a green belt. And it's a path that goes for miles, both directions. And it's right next to this little bit of a creek and it follows it all over. And many, many people have been spending their time with chalk and writing uplifting messages along the pathway. So when we've been going on our morning walks, there's beautiful messages of being kind and plant kindness and see what grows and you can do hard things with Christ and there's scriptures and hopeful thoughts, beautiful pictures and colorful drawings all along this pathway. And it adds so much light to my life. I am so, so grateful that people would spend their time to encourage and to uplift their neighbors and many neighbors that they don't even know. So that is a beautiful thing. What has my dog been up to? Let me tell you. Let me tell you. She has been amazing lately. Really, really amazing. Until today, she decided to be evil again. And she peed. She peed in my house again. She hasn't peed for maybe three weeks because she was having lots of issues remember anyway she hadn't peed and I felt like she got healthy because she's been putting weight on she's been she's just been like awesome wonder dog over here but then she peed and I feel like I've put up a wall around my heart because I'm very mad about this the boys said it was their fault because they didn't let her out which hmm Maybe that could be true, but it really does bother me that I have so much hardwood floor in my house and very little carpet, and yet she chooses to pee on the little bit of carpet. That is annoying to me. So talking about England, let me tell you, one of my favorite things growing up was I would go stay at my granny and Grancher's house, and my granny was of the nature of like uh, giving us a lot of freedom when we came over and so we would wake up early and they didn't wake up at the same time but we were allowed to go down and watch tv and so me and my brother my brother would sit in my grandchild's chair and I would sit in my granny's chair and we would watch Frank Spencer (laughs) it is so funny I should actually see if there are episodes like on YouTube or something because hilarious so so funny Frank Spencer, he is the bomb.com. Um, really loved it in Only Fools and Horses is the name of the show. There's Del Boy. Anywho, um, I was just thinking about that the other day and haven't seen it forever. So am I trying to explore and find it? Because I think it would be good to have a good giggle over amazing English comedy. But without further ado, darlings, we're going to get into today's story. <laughs> today's story comes from last summer when we were in Bangkok, Bangkok, Thailand. Raise your hand if you've been there, friends. <laughs> Wish I could see you, but I can't. But I'm feeling your awesome hands raised if you've been there. We went there in the month of May, end of May, early June. No, it was, yeah, that's when we were there. <laughs> and this was... The first full day that we were spending in Bangkok. 
Now, before we got to Bangkok, we'd flown into Hong Kong, spent a night, and then we flew over to Phuket and then spent um, a few, like four nights on an island, like an hour off of Phuket called Koh Yonoi. And then we'd come back to Phuket for a night and then we'd flew up to Bangkok. So we'd been in Southeast Asia for about a week-ish up till now and we were starting to get acclimated to the insane heat and humidity through the roof craziness and it seemed that we went into Bangkok and things got hotter (laughs) it actually just seemed like things just kept getting hotter as our trip went on because when we were on the island there was kind of the breeze we were next to the ocean and in Bangkok we were in the heart of the city We stayed in an Airbnb right in the middle of hustle and bustle. It was insane and awesome and alarming and colorful and flavorful. And there were so many smells everywhere (laughs) and many, many smiling faces. And this first main day, we were like, we're going to go to the Grand Palace. We're going to love it. We're going to see it all and check out all of the holy different um, tourist attractions throughout the city and we had read that we had to wear a long skirt that we had to be covered modestly and so I would put on this long maxi skirt and we had to have closed toe shoes so no flip-flops so I had sneakers because I thought we're going to be on our feet all day long and I want to be comfortable so I wore my sneakers okay let me just tell you these were two really bad ideas (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but I didn't know at the time. So we head out and even at the early part of the day, the heat is just absolutely skyrocketing. It is insane. We are like dribbling from every pore within seconds of leaving our apartment. And it's just nonstop. Like your hair is wet, your body is wet. It's like one of the kids will hang on me, just slips off because I, in a non crazy humid climate I'm a very gifted sweater I am able to sweat from all of my pores on a regular basis if it is hot enough put me in a humid environment in Southeast Asia and I am I could probably win the Olympics of over sweating I'm very very good at sweating (laughs) I don't know what that says about my body maybe I should research it but you're very gifted sweater here we head into the Grand Palace and um Jack, my oldest son, he was really struggling. They had to get, they rented some pants that were long because they only had shorts and they wore them to go into the palace and then they kind of returned them after. And so walking around, he's just overheating. We've got two little battery powered fans. Two is not enough for a group of seven people. We actually need like 14, two each, like one in your hand and one in your pants to like blow the air down there because you're just drenched, (laughs) so drenched everywhere. But we learned our lesson. We didn't know that at this time. And um, after going around the Grand Palace and getting our pictures and taking videos, and it was wonderful, um, at one point we go in and we had to take our shoes off because it was the most sacred part of the temple. And it felt so good to walk on stone floor. And it it wasn't cold, but it it wasn't boiling hot because it was inside and shaded. And that little little piece of loveliness just soothed our feet and our body for a quick jiffy. Anyway, we after this, we decided that we're going to hop on a boat and go over to find the big Buddha. This Buddha is ginormous. It's huge. It's like this like the size of multiple houses like <laughs> just enormous buddha gold buddha laying down i don't know why the buddha sometimes lay down but this is a laying buddha that's giant we wanted to go see it so we pop ourselves on this boat and let me tell you this boat we're so close to everyone else on the boat it's just like sliding skin as you rock side to side because we're all so close and everyone's so sweaty and it's a really good job that the COVID-19 virus wasn't around them because it would have been transmitted very very easily in that sort of situation but luckily that was not the case um so we go in this boat and we get off and we walk straight into this indoor market and there's food 
food and then there's trinkets and different creations that people are selling. And let me tell you, it was like going into this place where just air was very, very thin. And while we're on the boat, I was really starting to feel like my brain was not starting to function very well. And I was really starting to overheat. And when we walked into this indoor market with no ventilation whatsoever, it is just, it feels like there's no air actually. Maybe that's what it's like being on a different planet. The air seemed very, very, very thin and very hard to really bring into our chests and into our lungs to sustain us. And my eyes are just like going back and forth. My head is banging. And like with every step, it's taking so much energy for me to step forward and step forward. And we finally get out of the inside market, hoping for some relief, like a big ah, air. But no, 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 no. Like we go out and it seems just as hot, even worse, because now the sun is beating on us. It was nice that we got rid of the really gross fishy smell, but bad because the sun was now just streaming its strong, powerful rays upon us. And I take a few steps and I'm like, I can't do this anymore. I'm done. Like I really, I can't do it. And um, Ben looks at me, he's like, really? Is it really that bad? And I'm like, yeah, I, I can't, I can't do this anymore. And to the side of me, there's some public restrooms. So some toilets and you had to go pay to use them. They were not fancy toilets at all. <laughs> anyway, I guess they need to be maintained somehow. And there was a chair next to the entrance of the toilet. And it's like the closest chair that I could see. And I really didn't think I could walk any anymore. So I said, you guys go see the lame Buddha and then come and get me after. I'm just going to take a rest. So I sit on the toilet chair outside the toilets where there's this like gross whiff. I mean, super gross, you know, public restrooms. And these were mm, really low on the spectrum of how nice a toilet could be we're we're pretty low there so I'm sitting there with a whiff of toilet floating in and out of my nose while I literally cannot keep my eyes straight I cannot see properly I'm lifting up my skirt I'm trying to waft up my legs are absolutely drenched I mean I'm not even close to exaggerating it was there's so much water coming off of the skin of my body it was alarming And so I lay there and I suddenly, well, I don't lay there. I'm sitting there, but I feel like I'm kind of laying because my head's against the toilet wall. Yeah, super sanitary. And I go into this strange, bizarre daze slash hallucination. And it literally feels like my body starts shutting down. My vision starts going and my mind is super blurry. I'm kind of going in and out knowing where I am. Like, oh my goodness, where am I? And then I'd forget. Really bizarre. And I was just like, I just need water in my mind. I could just dream of water. I didn't have any water left with me because I'd already drank all of it. And I see this cafe across the way. And I'm thinking, maybe they have water in there. Maybe it's cooler in there. Maybe they have AC. A lot of places did not have AC. Uh, 7-Eleven did, but many of the places did not. And I remember just thinking, can I walk across the street? It was maybe like mm, 25 feet away, maybe 30. It was not far away. Or steps, maybe not feet, but like steps away. It wasn't far away. And in my mind, I would say, okay, I'm going to stand up. I'm going to walk. And I'd be like, come on, buddy, stand up. And I couldn't. Like I literally could not press my feet into the floor and extend my legs to a standing position. It seemed so hard. And then I started to panic inside. Like I became frightened. I don't even know where the rest of the group are. I'm next to a gross toilet on this rickety chair with the smell of grossness going in and out of my nose. And I am overheating in the extreme And I remember just starting to pray, just praying, pleading with God, help me stay awake, help me stay awake, help me breathe, help me not panic, please give me peace, I know they'll come back and it'll be fine. 
Anyway, after this prayer going on and on in my mind, keep bringing me back to the moment so that I didn't pass out or something awful. My family suddenly are right in front of me. So I must have been in some days and totally out of it. And I was like, oh my goodness, you're here. Somehow um, we find our way back to our apartment. I wasn't able to walk much. So we found a, what is it? Like a cab taxi. And um, it was kind of an ordeal because one taxi dropped us off at the wrong place. So we had to find another one. And I was really struggling. But when we got back to the apartment, I literally just went in and collapsed. I just collapsed upon our bed that was literally on the floor. It was a bed that was about a foot and a half tall. <laughs> and I stayed there until the next day. And this was around probably 1.30 p.m. And I was I was gone until <laughs> maybe eight o'clock the next day. And it was very alarming. <laughs> and it was not a pleasant experience. It was heat stroke. I have never had heat stroke before. And now I can say, been there, done that. Don't desire to do it again. Now, when I went to the palace, I realized that just like you had to have a skirt past your knees. You didn't have to have it to the floor. So I probably would have been just fine had I not had a maxi skirt on because my skirt practically touched the floor. So it was just this incubation where no air is getting in. And I think that's the reason why I overheated. But I wanted to share this story because whether we have a physical experience that's really intense like this or we have a spiritual challenge in our life or financial challenges or doubts that we have a faith crisis or people are bullying us or being unkind, whatever it might be, there's so many different types of challenges we can have. But I honestly believe that God will give us the strength that we need. I was able to stay safe, <laughs> leaning up against the toilet. I was able to stay safe and I really thought I was going to pass out and God gave me the strength that I needed. Now, he didn't give me like tons of strength. I wasn't suddenly like able to run around and do push-ups and do a headstand and be like, yay, laying down Buddha, I love you. No, like he just gave me enough to get through that moment. And in my life, I've learned that God gives me enough strength to get through that moment or whatever moment it is right there in front of me. I want to share this quote. It says, Jesus Christ has commanded us, look unto me in every thought, doubt not, fear not. Doubt, fear, and worry indicate that we have taken all of life's burdens and anxieties on ourselves when plagued by thoughts that you are inadequate, confidently say, I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. And then as you cheerfully do all things that lie in your power, you can rest assured that the Lord will do the remainder of the things which will work out all right. I love this. This was Anthony D. Perkins. He said this in a talk he gave called The Great and Wonderful Love. Do what you can in your situation and God will do the rest. I know this to be true. This month we are celebrating what we know to be true. And I know that God will give you the strength you need to get through whatever it is that is before you. He will. He has promised this. And he sticks to his promises. In Doctrine and Covenants, it says, I, the Lord, am bound when you do what I say. So when we choose to live like Jesus Christ, to follow his commandments and to be like him and live his gospel and seek his words, we will be blessed because God has said that he is going to provide for us if we follow him. And he will give us that which we need. He'll give us the needful thing that we need in that moment. I celebrate that I know that God gives us the strength that we need to accomplish whatever we are faced with. Now, that doesn't mean that God gives us everything we need. <laughs> no, he gives us what we need. And sometimes that's hard because we think we need something different to what God knows that we need. 
and that can really stretch our faith. But I encourage you to allow your faith to be stretched and to allow God to prove to you that he has a grand plan for you, that he is aware of you and that he will provide you with that which you need. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. I am super grateful for you and I love and adore you. And I want to know what adds light to your life. I want to learn from you and be inspired by your actions. And I'd love for you to go onto iTunes, leave a five-star review and let me know. And then I want to feature you here on the podcast because I think you have amazing ideas. And if you have any friends that you think would love this podcast, feel free to share it with everyone. I hope you have a glorious day.